Alrighty, so I'm going to be doing a uh, little guide on custom spirit ashes and how you can alter them and uh, switch them out and whatnot. Um, I actually just recorded this whole thing using a rune bear, but apparently the rune bear's models are big and weird with their hitboxes, so they just literally disappear and fall through the world um, if you don't do it super perfect and all that, so it is not worth it. So. Uh, I'm going from scratch again here, so bear with me. There are a couple of things that you will need uh, to get started with this. You will need UXM to be able to unpack um, Elden Ring. And you will need a Param editor like Yapt or uh, Param Studio. Or you, well, yeah, you just need those two things um, for Param editing. And then you will also need uh, Mod Engine 2. Um, and have that all situated and set up as well. Uh, I have videos for setting up and doing all of those things. I will also have links for all of those things um, as well. So if you don't know how to do that stuff or it's not already set up for you, go go do that real quick and then come back. I'll wait for you. Um, so. All right, I waited. So you're back or you already have that done. Uh, you're going to want to just get Param Studio opened up and loaded in here. Um, you're, we're going to be doing a lot of our work between Buddy Param, MPC Param, and uh, MPC Think Param. Um, you will go ahead and we'll start here in Buddy Param so I can kind of explain a few things. Uh, the green cells or green rows like this are because I have changed their values from default values and so they're showing as green to reflect that there have been changes or things done to them. Um, things that have multiple summons have multiple rows. This is on purpose. Uh, there is this little, like, effectively it's like a bracket. Uh, so 203 is for the fanged imps. So you have 203 and then 20301. Uh, so when you go and do the fanged imp ash, it will pull from within that bracket, which is those two things. So if you want three imps, you could duplicate this row by clicking Control C and then Control V and then submit. And then now you have three. So when you use fanged imps, it will summon three of these. Uh, we don't need that. So I'm just going to delete that with the delete key. But that is how that works. Um, same thing for taking away, you could just delete the rows so that more don't summon, but the easier way to do it would be to just click on it. Um, if you only want one of them summoning, you can click into a cell and then change your associated good ID to negative one. And then that would make it so that doesn't summon. Um, but we don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna put that back to what it was, just like that. So. Uh, as I mentioned, I actually went through this process with Rune Bear. Rune Bear is a nightmare. Rune Bear sucks. Rune Bear is a bastard. So, Rune Bear is a bastard in the game and he's a bastard in modding, so we're not going to use him. Um, so what we'll do here is we will go ahead and we will change the Lone Wolf here um, into... Let's do something like Crucible Knights, because I know that they work. I've, I've done those before, so we'll do that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down on the left here. We're going to go down to NPC RAM right here. Um, and you will have a lot of options. You can test and do whatever it is you want to do, whichever ones you want to try. Um, not every single one of these is tested and guaranteed to work because there are obviously so many of them. So uh, as I found out, Room Bear doesn't work. So we're not going to do that one. Uh, we will do a Crucible Night, which I may already have one set up. Somewhere in here, looking for some green, some green. There's some green right here. So I'm going to delete this line just to be able to re reshow what I did here. So you got a bunch of different Crucible Knights here. Uh, we're just going to go with the one at the top. So if you want to use um, an NPC or one of these entities, you're going to want to go ahead and click on the line and then copy and duplicate it so that you have a copied line because you don't want to use an existing Crucible Knight. You don't want to change existing Crucible Knight's information because then when you find it in the game, it will just be broken. It, it won't work, it won't behave properly. So you want to copy the line, make the edits to that line, and then use that one for your summon. So uh, what you want to do is make that copy. I like to go up to the top and make a note next to their name um, that they are a summon 
version, just so that way I can see it a little bit easier than this giant mess of information there. Um, then you will want to go on the right side here. You can scroll down until you get to NPC type and team type. You don't have to change NPC type, I don't believe, but team type, you're gonna to wanna to change that to 47. 47 is the value for spirit summons. You can also now scroll all the way down, all the way down to SP effect 29, and then change SP effect 29 to 297,000, and that should be Spirit Summon. Now with that being done, you can scroll back up to the top and you can copy that NPC ID for your Summon Crucible Knight or whatever uh, monster or NPC you, you want to use, but we're using Crucible Knight for this example. Now you'll just go back up to Buddy Param on the left side there. We have Lone Wolf and we will go ahead and change NPC ID to the one we just snagged. So when you paste it, make sure that you click off to the side or click off the cell so that it will solidify it. If you don't, it will default it back to its original value. So paste, click off. It turns green, you can tell it's there. Now we wanna get the NPC think ID, which is gonna be a very similar thing here. We're gonna go back down over here on the left side to NPC. Uh, think param instead of NPC param this time. And we are going to just go ahead and paste our value up here because that's what we're looking for. Just kind of gives us some help there. But you can also just scroll until you find Crucible Knights. But having a good ballpark for the number is always nice. Uh, there may even be a search function, but I'm just silly and uh, don't know. So, whatever. So, right here, you've got Crucible Knight, which is the ID right here is going to be the think ID. So you just need to copy that. That is all. And then you go back up to your buddy program. And then we will paste that under the NPC think ID. Click off so that it changes it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually disable the other two wolves really quick because we don't need those two wolves spawning in with our Crucible Knight. And then this is also just a good example of how that works. So we're going to disable those by doing negative one on them. They all show green because they are all changed. And then now if you have your mod engine, all that stuff set up correctly, your save directory is going to go to your mod engine mod folder directory here. Right here you can see 1049, today's date. There, all kind of lines up. And then we will go ahead and we will launch the game through the launch mod Elden Ring batch file. I'm going to turn off my music so that you don't got two things going on at once here because that's probably not enjoyable. Go ahead and get loaded in here. Uh, mod engine should by default disable your anti-cheat, but I do also have a video on disabling anti-cheat, which you should do, by the way, if you make modifications to the game. So now we're gonna run out here to Margit. We will skip his cutscene, because I've seen it a million times, and we will summon. And uh Oh, he had a wolf with him still. Nice. Must have not clicked off or something. But yeah, so there you go. That is how that works there. Um, I'm going to leave so they don't murder him. So I continue to use him as a ragdoll for other testing and other things like that. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's how that works. Um, we're going to go into Param Studio again, and I'm just gonna really quickly skim over a few things, make sure that I'm not missing any information for you guys. Um, yeah, so yeah, I changed the unk to negative one, not the associated good on one of the wolves, so that's why they spawned uh, in. So do that, and then this should be zero. Yep, so that is corrected now. Um, I will explain the spawn offsets 
just a little bit really quick because sometimes those are useful. So those obviously are what dictate where um, the creatures spawn in correlation to you when you summon. So sometimes there are uh, enemies that are rather tall or big, and so you kind of want them to spawn just a little bit off the ground so that they don't kind of like fall through the world. The Rune Bear is an excellent example of that. He just fell through the world over and over again, no matter what the value was that I set, because he was just so janky. So you may encounter that with uh, things that you use where they'll fall through the world or something of that nature. If that does happen, um, play around with their spawn offsets just a little bit save it go back in try and summon see if that makes a difference um and if the ais are broken or they don't do anything um that is usually up to the mpc think id most of the time uh, that would be what would cause it so um, you can get janky with it if you know that there's an mpc think id that does work you can try and take that and then put it on a different monster and see if that works you can you can really play around with it quite a bit so um but yeah hopefully that has been helpful for you guys um i uh have recorded this like four times now because of the freaking room bear breaking shit so many times so uh if that was helpful uh leave a like or even a subby bubby and i will continue to keep pumping some stuff out mm. Bye.